thanks to MPB for sponsoring this week's video. So in this video, I've traveled to Iceland with the sole aim to photograph a puffin, a bird I've wanted to photograph for so long. I came to Iceland around 20 years ago for the first time and was told that puffins left the weekend before. And ever since, I've wanted to come back and photograph them. Armed with the 100 to 400 millimeter lens and the knowledge I picked up at Bempton a few weeks ago, I set off to this small island full of excitement, but also nerves as I looked to do something way out of my comfort zone. Would the puffins be there? But more importantly, would a man with a bad back crawling in a bright orange jacket frighten them off? Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. <laughs> I am in Iceland, and more specifically this tiny little island off the south coast of Ireland. I've come here to photograph puffins, a bird that I've wanted to photograph for so long and dedicate a little bit of time to, but I've always just been passing them and only got little small shots in the distance. There's hundreds of them, thousands of them, even millions of them on this island, and I'm gonna go and find them. So um, yeah, I'm so excited but there's so many loopings here and so many great landscape shops as well. It's such a beautiful little island. I have to be really quiet because there's some puffins just behind me here, but I've come right to the end of the island and there's puffins everywhere here. Now they're not that close. So I think there's some just further down the path here. I'm going to stay on the path, go down there and see what I can find. But what an amazing sight. I'm definitely going to get my shot. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know if they're feeding their young yet. I think a lot of them seem like they're collecting grass so maybe they're still building their nests. But it um, might be a little bit early to see them with any um, sand eels, are they? I think they're sand eels. Oh. Right, I've got this one here that you can just see on my screen. He, she, don't know, long way away. So I've got 400 mil lens on at the moment. I think I'm gonna go head up, sort of behind me up this hill here because I can see that there's quite a lot on the banks up there. And I think that's because there's maybe a little bit more grass up there. So I think they're going where you can pick more grass out. So I get a few longer shots of this and then I might just sort of go a little bit further down here, but it's a good start for tenor. Okay, I've just um, just come over the hill here. There's loads down here. So I'm gonna try and get to an angle where I can get low. So I'm shooting at eye level. There's so many, there must be about 30 down here. God, I hope they don't fly away. So on this first day, I was just scouting around, trying to find the best locations, but really just trying to understand the behavior of the birds. Okay, so I've got quite close to one here. You can just see, he's just sat down. Um, and what I'm trying to do is just in this area here, in the top right, you can see that they just fly over. So, and I've just been catching them just in flight and it's worked pretty well. <laughs> Puffins are flying everywhere. I feel like getting them in flight is probably not going to be too difficult. Getting close to them is hard. What I really want, my, my ideal shot, is I want a portrait of a puffin looking straight at me um, with a pretty good background. <laughs> not too much to ask, 
but there are there must be tens of thousands of them just so many of them but as soon as you get close they just fly away and when one flies there's a they fly. They seem to be just gathering the grass and just chilling out on the grass bank here. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to stick to the paths as well, which makes it a little bit trickier, but I feel like I should do that. Okay, it started raining and um, I've got these these puffins, two puffins here. But what I want to do is try and get some of the water on the puffins back. There's quite a few puffins here actually and there's a really nice background. So I'm just doing some video at the moment and then hopefully I'll be able to do some um, photos. It's raining so much now, and I think I might have just got a good shot over there, but um, it's so difficult in the rain, because it's so difficult to video, really. So I've just been trying to get them from a little bit further away and get the rain drops in the background and, and the rain on the back of the drops. So it's more of a sort of landscapey type shot. I think I got it, but I'm gonna wait now and see if they come back. But oh my word, it's raining so much now. I'm going to try and find the puffins down here because I think there might be a just around the headland here. I think there's a chance of finding them, but it's so beautiful here. Look at this. As the sun got lower behind the clouds, the light obviously dropped quite significantly, and I was shooting sometimes at ISO 8000. So when I got back, I had to use denoise in Lightroom and I'm going to be back in my studio soon and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because it was incredible. Right, so I'm going to just try to have a look around here, but I don't see any sign of any puffins, I have to say. I think the mostly round where the lookout is, which should sort of make sense, doesn't it? But it's so beautiful here, so beautiful. It's very much like the Pharaohs. Right, I'm gonna walk all the way around here, can't find them. So I think they must be up by, up over there. So I think I'm gonna just go back to the original spot that I found the puffins. But it's been nice just exploring a little bit and this is so beautiful here. I'm going to go down this little headland here. I think I can see some puffins. So it's whether they're going to stay, but I think what I'm going to do is they will fly off, I think. Then I'm going to lie down on the floor, act small. And I think as long as I'm quite small on the floor, I think, I think they'll come back because that's where the burrows are, where they're sort of hanging out. And hopefully they'll have some fish in their mouths. But just do it a little bit more light. Ugh. So I'm going to have to be quiet now once I'm over here because I can definitely see some up there. Okay, 
Okay, there's three up here, so I'm just going to crawl. Because I don't think they like it when I'm big, so I just crawl and I'll be fine. That's the plan anyway. So, so far, they're not going anywhere. They won't mind them small, I don't think. Just be quiet. Just be real quiet, man. No, no, no. no take. So I think I'll just slowly go back to this camera. I'm just gonna um, wait, they've gone. Uh, the oyster catchers started shouting at me and I think that frightened them off a little bit. I got quite close. So I think I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna stay small, stay low and wait here for maybe 45 minutes and see if they come back. If they don't, then I'll go and see what else I can find. There's some over there, I think on the water. But there are these little puffing things. <laughs> Gotta be so patient and I'm not. I'm just not. I think I'll ever be a wildlife photographer, but I've definitely got some good shots and I'm going to be more patient. I've been sat around for about 45 minutes and they're literally all gone again and I can see them out at sea just taunting me. They're just like look at me out at sea and then they fly around a little bit and then I'm like, I'm not here in my yellow coat. That's probably a mistake. But anyway, please come back little puffins if you can hear me. There was loads yesterday. They were like more compliant. <laughs> right, they're coming back. Um, they're all over the shop now. Just flying around everywhere. It's easier to see them tonight because the clouds are a little bit nice. In fact, there's even a chance of a nice sunset tonight. So I'm just going to stay here and just chill and see, see what I can get. for about an hour with this puffin. My back kills, but I need to go to bed. What an amazing experience this is. Oh. Doesn't get better than this. Wow we So I'm back in my studio now and it was fantastic fun shooting with this 100-400 on my ZA. I have to say more about that in a minute and I've also got a print of my favourite puffin shot which I didn't show in the video that I just showed. Um, but first of all I just want to thank MPB. If you're looking to upgrade your equipment, you know, maybe get a lens like this or a new body, then I would thoroughly recommend looking at MPB. They're a worldwide platform for used gear. I've always bought used gear and it's just been fantastic for me. You get it a lot cheaper and with MPB, you get the peace of mind of a six month warranty. They check all the gear that comes in, 
it really is a fantastic deal. So check out MPB for any used equipment, whether you're trying to buy some or you've got some used equipment to sell when you're changing lenses or bodies. There's a link in the description below and it makes it super easy to save money on equipment you need. Okay, onto this print. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about denoise. So this is my favorite image. It was taken at ISO 2000. It was really dark when I was there. I didn't have a lot of sunlight. It rained quite a bit as you saw in the video. And I was really struggling with light, basically. Um, this lens is like f5.6 at its best. So, you know, you've got to have a little bit of light if you want to shoot at a fast shutter speed at a low ISO. And that's something, <laughs> it's quite hard for me as a landscape photographer. I'm usually on a tripod shooting at ISO 64. Um, but this was shot at ISO 2000. And with the denoise feature in Lightroom, I'm going to show you some things on Lightroom in a second. Um, really quickly, but the denoise feature really does help. Right, before we get on to just looking at Lightroom quickly, the reason I like this image is I feel like it shows some of the behavior of the puffins. This puffin's just turning around, it's sort of got a beadly eye on me, and, and I just like the way it's looking at me really. Um, it was a little bit of a cat and mouse game with the puffins when I was there. So I really, I really like this, I thought I captured it well. It's not probably technically the best image or maybe even the best composition, but behavior wise i try to get below the grasses to create a little bit of me you know looking over the grasses behavior wise i think this works so i'm really pleased with that um okay so let me just grab my computer and just quickly show you right so first of all let me just show you the benefits of this denoise um if you've used topaz before you've probably got something similar to this so it's nothing revolutionary but it does make a big difference and it's built into Lightroom now, which makes it really easy. So this was on the right was the noisy one, the ISO 8000 one, 400 millimeters to get one 250th of a second, believe it or not. Um, and I like this shot because it looked like this one was hugging the other one. Um, and then this one is the cleaned up one after denoise at about 35%, um, I think, which is great. One of the issues though, I think with high ISO and, um, is dynamic range and loss of detail. So you can see in this area of the face, and I, I can demonstrate a little bit better in another image, but you can see that you just don't get that graduation of tones quite as nice at a higher ISO. So for instance, let me just go back to this. This one here was shot at ISO 1000, a 30th of a second I shot this because I just waited for the puffin to just stay still. But you can see that the graduations of tones are good. The disadvantage with this is it's not pin sharp, obviously. Um, and again, this one, which was a bit more light, this was shot at eight, ISO 800. So this is good. You can see that this one is at ISO 8000 on the left-hand side. They're both zoomed into 100%. And this one here is at ISO 800. And if we just look around the eye area here, it's similar light here, overcast. I just don't have those graduation of tones. I'm not picking out the details in the feathers the same. So you've got to be super careful. Even, I mean, this hasn't had any denoise, but it's only going to get worse when I denoise it. You're not going to get that feather detail back. So you've got to be careful. It's fine having that denoise. It does clean the image up, but I would be super careful. The other thing is that you lose color um, as well. So you don't have that um, color depth that you have in a lower ISO image. So be careful when you're shooting at higher ISO is what I'd say. Uh, anyway, that's it. That's it for this week. Next week, we're in Greenland. Um, I literally nearly die via some massive ice carving. It's pretty epic. I can't wait to show you that video. And um, until then, bye. Okay, just be quiet. Mm. Nope, that's a seagull. <laughs> Oh, there's puffins. There's seagulls everywhere. Anybody want a seagull? A seagull? There you go. Done.